To me, the key thing is don't go out there and try and implement wholesale changes. Hello, I'm with Wayne Maloney again. Welcome back, Wayne. Thanks, John. Good to be here. Hey, Wayne, we've been working through the chapter of your book, The, the, the Roadmap to Sales Management Success. Yeah. Uh, and we're up to Chapter 10, which I think is the last chapter. It certainly is, yeah. Well done. And I think it's probably the most important chapter in well, my life. Well, it's definitely critical, that's for sure. And, and what it is, a sales manager needs to be a high-performance coach. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit about what you mean and what you said in the book. Yeah, look, from a coaching perspective... If we look at each individual, so often people mix up training with coaching and they will go out and they will invest. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be investing in external training, but if an organization brings people in and just runs a training course for two days or three days or whatever and says, great, tick that box, we're there. Coaching is about looking at each individual and putting in place a formal process to help that individual address the strengths and weaknesses, improve the strengths they've got, but improve even more so the weaknesses they've got. So the sales manager should be identifying with each individual a program to help them develop, and that's what coaching's about. And I guess to help do that, we talked previously about performance management yeah. uh, and, and the fact that we need to be able to be a good performance manager, and that means understanding the, the leading and lagging indicators yeah. by individual and what they're actually performing well in as through the sales process, yeah. and through that, drive our coaching. Yeah, very much so. It, look, it's as much about self-evaluation for the manager it is about evaluating the team because a good coach is evaluating themselves and what they need to do to apply the best development program or the best development facilities for an individual so a good sales manager is continually evaluating themselves and asking for that evaluation back as well so to be a high performance coach what do we need to keep in mind to be a good coach to me the most important thing is little changes will bring about great success. A perfect example of that was just prior to the London Olympics, or some time prior to the London Olympics, they decided that cycling was going to be a major event for them in the Olympics. They hadn't done well in it for decades You're before. talking about the UK? The UK, sorry, yeah, yeah. and they hadn't done well in it for, for years. The coach they brought in suggested that he didn't need to make wholesale changes. What he needed to focus on was if he got 1% improvement in each of the critical areas of those athletes, right, he would end up with a greater, greater level of success. So it's almost synergistic, if you like. So mm -hmm. he, he looked at it, he broke down each of the areas that were critical in that cycling event, and each one was different depending on which cycling event it was. And which person. And which person. Yeah. And then aim for that person to achieve a 1% goal. Okay. Improvement. And they had an outstanding result. The result of that was the best success that they'd had in ever in cycling in those Olympics. So to me, the key thing is don't go out there and try and implement wholesale changes. Look for areas within a, an individual's uh, skill set where you can make incremental changes and over a period of time, those incremental changes will add up and have a significant effect. And, and coaching is not necessarily about teaching and certainly not necessarily about showing people how to do things. It's more about being a sounding board and, and saying, hey, this is an area that we, I, you've identified uh, that you need to improve in. How do you think you should improve that? Go through the GROW process. I yeah. like the GROW process. Yeah, and very much so. G-R-O-W. Yeah. And look, that that's very much the case. Is you, know, you need to be helping that person identify the areas that are not helping them achieve their goals. And help them be accountable for thinking th that through and, and deciding what to do about it and then implementing it themselves, you're there just as a sounding board and, and holding the hand through the process. That's right, yeah. Um, I, I agree. And look, we've talked about it before. A lot of uh, sales managers are very successful salespeople, so they're very tempted to show them how and do it for them. Uh, and, and they're not going to learn as much from uh, uh, that way as doing it themselves, making the mistakes, and you be there ready to pick them up and brush them off and let them learn from the experience and go forward. Let them learn from the experience, appraise the results, and then praise or redirect. Fantastic advice. Coaching to me is, is the most important aspect of the whole sales management uh, process that you've talked about, and I thank you very much for that chapter. I loved it. Thanks, John. Thank you.